Chapter 12. The Anti-Gravity Machine I was never so giddy with excitement as when, at 24 years old, I invented the anti-gravity machine. In my mind, I had revolutionized transportation. Every car would become a flying car. Crowded highways would become a thing of the past. You could park your car on the roof if you wanted to. So many problems would be resolved, whatever they might have been. I won't reveal how the anti-gravity machine was supposed to work. It didn't work. We'll leave it at that. I had my two-week annual leave from the Army band coming up, and I was eager to build my machine. I had spent weeks drawing up the plans and making a parts list. Kay was working during the day, so I had all day to tinker without her interference. I bought a powerful one-horsepower electric shop motor, a sheet of half-inch finished plywood, numerous bolts, several pulleys, and a drive belt. I already had a power handsaw and electric drill. I knew that building my anti-gravity machine out of plywood was impractical and made it really heavy. It should have been made out of aluminum or some other lightweight metal, but I didn't know how to work with metal. I only knew how to work with wood. I figured that once I proved the concept, future concepts of the anti-gravity machine would be made out of metal when it sold and went into mass production. I made sure absolutely sure, to allow an hour for cleanup every single day before Kay got home from work. She had said with some disgust when she left for work, I don't care what you do, just don't leave a mess. I knew I would really catch hell if I left things in process. By the time she got home, I had my construction project tucked away in the hall closet behind the winter coats. Any sawdust was vacuumed up, and all the extra pieces gathered in a cardboard box, ready for the next day's tinkering. She knew I was building an anti-gravity machine, but had no interest whatsoever in how it might have worked, or how I would build it. Kay just didn't want it cluttering up the house. Around noon on the ninth day of construction, I was ready for my very first test run. I started it up, and it whizzed and whirred, but it didn't lift off the ground. What was I expecting, anyway? I figured it was too heavy to get all the way down to zero weight. Maybe it was losing weight, and it would just need more power to make it lift completely off the ground. I brought in the scale from the bathroom and rigged up a platform so that my anti-gravity machine was perched on top of it. I made a note of the fact that it weighed 47 pounds before I started up the motor with its attached clumsy mechanism. With great anticipation, I inserted the plug into the wall. My noisy, vibrating machine was in the way. I had to struggle to see the weight reading on the small scale. The scale read 47 pounds. I swallowed hard and felt my pride go to the pit of my stomach. I had spent my two-week summer vacation building a ridiculous mechanical contraption, wasting money and making a fool of myself. I quickly dismantled the device and sheepishly carried it down the stairs to the dumpster. I was grateful for the large apartment dumpster. But even more, I was grateful for the fact that most everybody else was still at work and I didn't have to explain my clumsy contraption to anybody, not even Kay.